I want to go over a basic bathroom layout in a basement here. Um, in new construction, we call this the underground plumbing. See, so I've got a permit and my set of plans here ready for inspection today. That is for my underground plumbing inspection. And what we've done, the plumbers have roughed in a bathroom. So over here, this is a shower drain. That's going to be for a three foot by five foot shower. So they've already done a measurement off the wall to allow three and a half inches for framing, a half inch for drywall, and a half inch gap behind that. So four and a half inches off the wall. From there, you measure out to the center of your drain off of both walls. That's got a P-trap underneath it. You can't really see, but the P-trap's buried. That little red can is just to keep the guys from pouring cement around it or burying it up. Uh, the cement guys will actually frame a box around that most likely when we get to that point. Over here, we have a toilet flange. That needs to be set 12 inches from your finished wall and 15 inches left or right to anything else, whether that be the side of a tub, the side of a cabinet, or whatnot. I go 17 inches on mine. I like to give it a little room if you've ever sat in a toilet that your elbows bump. I'm a small guy and if my elbows are bumping I know it's a problem. So that's what that is. This pipe coming up the back wall where they've got their little pressure gauge is just a vent pipe. So that they push back as far as they can. We're going to hide that in the wall and run up and tie into the rest of the plumbing um, vent lines going out the roof. You can see on the gauge we've got it set at 5 psi. They're doing an air test on this so it's got to hold 5 psi um, I forget what the exact regulation is, not for very long, for like 15 minutes. But you don't know when inspectors are coming, so you pump it up and hope it holds all day until they come. Now for the actual pipe being laid in the ground, a couple things to consider. First, your layout. You've got to have a P-trap under your shower. Your toilet here just has an elbow. That doesn't need to have a P because your toilet itself has a P-trap built into it. If you look at the size of a porcelain toilet, you'll see that um, squiggly line following down with the drain. That is your P-trap. So here we just put an elbow and flush out. So it's a three inch line for the toilet, a two inch line for your drain. Oh, and this vent line coming up, we'll tie a T in there that will run across this wall and stub out for a sink in that corner. So you can see here's my other wall and over there we'll have a vanity but that allows us to stub out wherever we want depending on what size vanity we put there and what the layout is and it doesn't need to go underground anyways that's just one more thing to deal with. So all these pipes you see joining together with those long Y's Y again and then we're going to head around to the sewer in this case we're hitting an ejector pit and I'll show you that but the thing to make sure when you're putting all your pipe together it all glues, same as anything else you're doing in the wall. They're just using a uh, purple primer and a regular AB, uh, or, uh, PVC, excuse me, PVC glue. This is PVC pipe. ABS is the black pipe. And you've got to make sure you have a quarter inch of flow on your pipe. So this little level here actually has a built-in um, grade bubble. See if I can get this to show here. So you can see that little bubble there, and it sh has uh, increments. Each of those little lines shows a different increment. If you're looking at it from the top, I don't know if you can make this out on the video, it calls out an eighth inch, a quarter inch, um, three eighths, and a half inch. So you can get your flow if you're doing a pipe, or you can use this for setting a sidewalk form if you need to have flow on that. So we're going for a quarter, when they say a quarter bubble, that's what it is, quarter inch per foot flow coming out of here. So this drain goes down. Let's follow it down. Just out of interest, I'll show you what happens here. So it's bedded in dirt the whole way. You want to make sure that's firm so you don't dig down any deeper than you have to. And you pack dirt in around it to hold it in place. When this is done, um, after inspection, these cement workers will put dirt over this and they'll use a jumping jack, a little vibratory compactor, to compact the dirt through here before they pour the cement. So we want to make sure it's packed solid underneath it or it's virgin soil underneath so that doesn't move on us. Over here we've got a floor drain. Um, this is where the water heater will sit and the furnace will sit next to this. So that's a little floor drain. Again, it's got a P-trap. It goes down underground there. You can't really see all of it, but you can see the pipes leading and coming from it. And over here we actually have an ejector pit. It's a sewage pit. Um, this is basically the same as an ejector pit for a sump. The only difference is it's sealed off. It's got rubber gaskets because this is getting waste from the bathrooms. It's also got a grinder on the pump. 
this will grind solids, um, organic matter, toilet paper, whatnot, and shoot it up through that standpipe. It'll come up and we'll actually frame over and go out our wall over here. We're going to a septic field, a leach field. So that's what the final product's going to look like. But right now, this is just the underground. Hopefully this helps you with a better understanding of how these go in. If you're trying to troubleshoot a system that you've got, or if you're trying to put one in in a small bathroom, hopefully this layout in here helps you understand how to plumb your own bathroom. Thanks for watching.